Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Am I in the way here? You can't see the screen. Can you see the screen? Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that sometimes you may not hear or hear me what I'm saying, but when you read there, you can understand better what I'm trying to say. You know, the accent sometimes g gets in the way that many people don't hear me. What I'm trying to, um, what I'm trying to say. Thank you so much for allowing me to come here. I want to thank the pastor that pastors here. You know, sometimes it is very difficult for pastors to give their pulpit to somebody else to do the work. It's all in every professional you go around, you know, they have to screen the people that are coming around. But I would say thank you so much for allowing me to come here and share with you what the Lord has put in my heart. We're just going to do the brief things, you know, preliminary things. Let me get settled and go into the subject properly. There are certain things that we have to do. I was trying to see if I could do, I don't know if this, my laptop will reach up here with this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I can. That would be much better. Are yeah. No, I think unless it is blocking you to see up there, that would be. I think this would work as much better. This morning, what I want to accomplish, if you miss anything else, I want you to understand that. Sickness does not just come by itself. The number one cause is that of our digestive system. That's the link for all sicknesses. Whether you get an infection here, whether you, anything that comes by, the digestive system, somewhere it is impaired. It's not doing its work. In this city, if the sewer system breaks down, more than likely the government will force everybody else to get out of this city so they can fix the sewer system because people are going to get sick. So the link of all diseases starts from the digestive system. That's what I want to accomplish. So as I go through this, look at that goal and align yourself with whatever you are suffering from. Then you begin to say, hey, how is my digestive system working? Is it working for me? Now, if I stop there, then I haven't helped you. But I would give you suggestions that if you follow those suggestions, you are going to begin to feel better. Now, let me tell you this. No matter how sick you are, it only takes seven days for you to feel the difference. By the time you finish 21 days, you have started a new trajectory of your life. But the main reason why many people don't get well the main reason is what is in our mind. The mind and the body work together. As a man thinketh, so is what? Is he. Let's have a word of prayer again before we start into this. Heavenly Father, we come to you your children. We don't know how to go in and come out. But you have promised that if we ask, you'll give us. Therefore, we ask your Holy Spirit to come and be with us as we learn things that can help us to serve you better. We are looking forward to the day when you shall come to take us home. In Jesus' name, amen. In the book of Proverbs, 
chapter 23, verses 1 through 3, it says, When thou sittest to eat with a rule, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to what? Appetite. Appetite. Be not desirous of his dianities, for they are deceitful meat. These are powerful words. <clears throat> a man who can say no to food can say no to anything. When I say man, I'm using human people. I worked with a cancer patient. He had cancer, stomach cancer. He was given three weeks to leave. When I went to the home, he had not slept for a month because his stomach was so big, the tumor was growing inside. The only way he could feel comfortable is to sit on a recliner so he can give enough room for his stomach. When I walked in, I was with my wife, when we walked in the house, he said, anything, I'll do it. So we started the way we do it, prepare all the concussions that we are preparing. I mean, that man took them. It took us almost about four or five hours to unblock the digestive system so that dead water can come out. Sure enough, by the time we were unblocking, nobody could stay in the house. But three days later, the time when we came, he had lost his taste because of the chemo. He had lost his smell. He could not smell. He could not taste. So he was drinking those juices, those concussions very easy. We never had a problem. But the third day, he got his taste back. And the first time he smelled, he took the same concussion, put it in his mouth. He said, Brother Banda. I don't think I can deal with this. But the rest is the story. You can see what the mind can do to us. That's the biggest problem. When we are geared into what we like, it forms a pathway in our brain that it is very difficult for us to move back to where it is right. That's why the food industry, they don't hire medical doctors to be on their board of making decisions for food. No, they hire psychologists, well trained in how the mind what? Works. What are the nutrients that can, you know, you can mix chemicals to create trajectory in the brain. If you look at McDonald's, Wendy's, huh? they have their own growers of the French fry, the potatoes, in Idaho. No, but they don't just buy from anybody. They have their own growers. They have specific specificity of cutting those French fries. Chemicals they add to them to make their own pattern of food. But very little studies that have been done to see that these chemicals, what are they doing on a long-term basis to our what? Time for going to the store to buy food that we just walk out and go to the store to buy food is gone. The time we sit at the table here to eat and we say, let's, let's bless the food. That's where the devil has, what, influenced from there. The time that we need to pray hard is when you sit at the table to make a budget that we are going to the store to buy food. You ask, you say, Lord, give me discernment that no food that you don't want it to get into my body, it should not get in the cart in the first place. Amen. Because once it gets in the cart, it's a done deal. Mm -hmm. You can pray as you want to when you come there. It's a done deal. You walk in Walmart. You don't know who grow those food. I can tell you, Companies that are growing food, they are not farmers, they are chemical companies. So, here, when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. 
That's a very good advice. Let's heed that. Here is the spirit of prophecy. Intemperance source of church trials. The abuses of the stomach by the gratification of appetite are the fruitful source of most church what? The elders, when you're in the board meeting and you're deliberating issues, eh? deliberating issues, you're going nowhere. Ask what they ate last night. You'll find where the problem comes from. It influences our decision, whether you like it or not. Studies are there, theories are there. Political affiliation, how people are going to deliberate issues. It is influenced by uh, what we what? We eat. Yesterday I was doing an assessment, a, a seven-year-old girl came with her mother and a three-year-old sister. Ten minutes into assessment, I realized that we have a problem. Because by that time, you look at my room where I was doing my assessment, it was like tornado has passed through. <laughs> I would say, here are the toys that you want to play with. He'll come, she'll come pick one, no. She's going climbing on there. Everything that was in there was right down on the floor. And the only thing that was standing was the table where I was sitting to write. <laughs> but everything was upside down. So I said, the, the, her mother said, do you see what I go through? I say, yeah. When I ask the question, just give me a sample of the men you feed them. Right there, I realize that's where the problem is. Nine out of ten, when I work with the children that are having problems, you don't have to tell them anything. Change what they eat. They come down. Within seven days, they are what? Quiet as possible. Now, it says that Those who eat and work intemperately and irrationally, talk and act irrationally, it is not necessary to drink alcoholic liquors in order to be what? The sin of intemperate eating, eating too much, too frequently, and of, di uh, of rich and wholesome foods, destroys the health action of the digestive organs, affects the brain and perverts the judgment, prevent rational, calm, healthy thinking, and acting. Amen. The controlling power of appetite will prove the ruin of thousands who, if they had conquered on this point, would have had the moral power to gain the victory over every other temptation. Now, you'll notice that whenever somebody... We don't preach any more health message on our pulpits these days. If you are trying to say, hey, spirituality and diet, they are in link. They say, shut up, preacher. You don't know. You can't tackle my food. I'll eat what I want, but I'll come to church. I'll give my tithe, but I'm not going to give my food. But brothers and sisters... If we cannot control what goes in here, it will be very, very difficult for us even to enter the kingdom of God. I'm not saying that eating vegetarian meat is what's going to get us into heaven. No, but when we eat food that God has designed us to eat, it functions better our brain. We're going to have enough neurotransmitters for us to perceive things and see the way they are. You know, I had a child that was very, very aggressive. It rocked the whole district. You know, in kindergarten, what can you do with a kindergarten? Five year old. I mean, the teacher did everything she could. Whenever she thinks she got to get out, she's out. I mean, he is out. I'm saying that he would just get up. Hey, stop. He opened the door. 
And he's not going to go to the front office, but he's going to sound the alarm of every door that is leading outside. So he came under my care. I sat down with his mother. His mother was 24 years old. The child was five years old. So you can see the age difference there. So we sat down. I have little books, e-books, that talks about behavior. One thing they said, you don't just remove the food from the diet, but you have to add also. Is that right? Because if you just remove, then you are not supplying what they need. Okay? So I showed, I said, listen, when people are aggressive, the underlying cause is depression. Serotonin is not enough. We are coming to that in this. But if they are vitamin D deficient, the brain does not know how much serotonin to make to balance with the dopamine. When that is different, they can be argumentative, stubborn, aggressive, you name it. I'm going to do it my own way. They see the world their own way. And their world is what has raised them, which is the TV. Okay? So, we looked at this. I recommended that let's have a complete medical evaluation to make sure that these behaviors don't have a medical condition. Then we move it from there. So I suggested, one of the things that I suggested to the doctor, the primary care physician, was to test vitamin D. The following day, Mem came, he said, here's what the doctor said. He said he can't do vitamin D test. He is white male, living in South Carolina. There's no way he can be vitamin D deficient. Okay? So I fired back. I went to the website of the Medical Center of North Carolina. I fired back. I wrote him. I said, can you just look at a person and say your vitamin D is good because he's living in South Carolina? Have you seen that 95% of the children in South Carolina are vitamin D deficient? That's why South Carolina is on the campaign of normalizing vitamin D to all children in South Carolina. He can get the vitamin D you're going to do to this child. You're not going to pay for it. The, the state is going to pay for it. So he called back the mother, came in, checked vitamin D. It would not register on the scale. So the doctor gave, this is a little boy, five years old, gave him 50,000 dose of vitamin D. Okay? I want you to hear the results. It was just like you flipped the switch night and day. He come to school, in line, goes to sit at his place. Stand up, he's standing up. Sit down, he's sitting, not sit down, he's standing up. Stand up, he's sitting down. That's what he was doing before. But he changed now, he's on the routine. Then what you do is you do psychosocial rehabilitation teaching him that this is right, this is wrong, because he can hear now. What happens is, in our brain, eh, we produce serotonin in our gut, but that serotonin does not go into, does not cross the brain barrier. So the brain has to make its own what? Serotonin. Yeah. Tryptophan is the building block for serotonin. For tryptophan to be converted into serotonin, you need vitamin D. That's the reason why you see that even in older people, old timers, dementia, is because of vitamin D deficiency. It's the main hormone that is missing for the brain to raise up the serotonin to balance with the dopamine. Did you know that serotonin and dopamine, they work inversely? When dopamine rises, what happens? Serotonin goes down. So you have to have a balancing hormone that balances this so it doesn't go out of what? Out of work. 
So, the continual regression of men over 6,000 years has brought what? Sickness, pain, and death as its fruit. And as we draw near to the close of time, certain temptations to indulge appetite will be more powerful and more difficult to what? To resist. Right now, I think McDonald's is fulfilling its idea of opening every day one store in China. Where do they get the money from? The people. If you get a franchise of McDonald's, you're going to be a millionaire within a few time, I mean within a short time. It's guaranteed business. Yeah. But, like I was saying, in Idaho, when they harvest those potatoes, they have to stay six weeks in a shed. Nobody should go in there to let the chemicals they used to polish them. They are so nice, smooth, non-blemish potatoes. Then they will take them to their factories to cut them and season them. That's why you can put it for six months, it will never get rotten. And we eat that every day. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, when I came here from Africa, I came to Oakwood. The first day, I went into a restaurant where you got to pick your own food. Back home, we don't have that. You always see, you give, you take your plate, they give your plate, you go and sit and eat. But there it was, you pick, you want. Stand in line, get a plate. My ignorance, I didn't know that you, the decorations they put up on top, you know, round burger. Pretty much I say, that's bread. So I'm walking, I pick up that plastic bread, put it in my plate. So the lady that was coming behind me said, he, he punched, his, he, he said, that's a decoration. The bread is over there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't get embarrassed, you know. That's the good thing when you are young. I mean, you don't get really embarrassed. You don't know what embarrassment is. So I put that thing back. I went. But that was a lesson that I learned that, hey, different cultures have different ways of doing things. Then I went there. I saw the vegetarian meat, you know, <laughs> the wrong things. So you got to take your bread, cut it in between. You take the meat, put it in there. Man, when I put my, I sunk my teeth into that thing, I felt so different. Then I wrote home, I told my dad, I said, Dad, here there are certain things, the bread, they don't make it like the way you make it at home. It's round. Then you cut in between, put the meat. They are so good. But let me tell you this. I completely forgot the way how we eat at home. Completely forgot. I was sunk into that food. There was one day we had Holy Communion at church, so I went to put on my church clothes. What happened to me? I couldn't fit in them because I've expanded more. Mm -hmm. Then it continued, it continued. I was so big to the point that I, I could not tie my own shoes. I couldn't bend to tie because my stomach was on the way. Mm -hmm. I began to become metabolic. Then I had an Indian doctor whom was my physician. He said to me, he said, Cardrington, the chicken here is not the same way the chickens are raised at home. These chickens are only six weeks old. Where could you see a six-week six chicken having a big drumstick like the one you see here? So when you eat them, be careful. Now, I was grown up in the church. I was raised by my church parents. We believed in the spirit of prophecy, the health message, and the Bible. Every morning and every evening, there was prayer in my home. I sat back. I said, Lord, I know I've sinned against you by my what? Appetite. If 
you will heal me. I'll take this message to anybody who has ears to listen. Amen. I had a struggle to quit eating chicken. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, the devil is so powerful because he wants to master the race and go with him. That time, you know, Walmart was building this super Walmart. And you know the position. Those people are not stupid when they set their store. They really study human behavior. You see, when you go to the food section, the first thing that really gets you is what? The smell. I've walked in that store. I said, today I'm not going to get any piece of chicken. I said, my mistake is I'm going to the food section first. That is really tempting me. But now I'm going to go on the what? Where? Not, not the produce, but the other door. Where the clothing, is, I mean, where the pharmacy is. You know? The way they said the food is over this way, the pharmacy is over the other end. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And the garden section. So I'll go that side. Go back to the grocers. By the time I come to go to the check, I got eight pieces in my hand. I said, Lord, I failed you. It went on for six months while I'm struggling with that. But I got victory. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God has promised that he will give us victory over everything that beset us. Amen. We have to make up our mind. We are not going to get victory without fight. We have to fight. Don't put sugar in your color greens. Love the taste of color greens because that's what it's going to get you. Oh, it's bitter. Let me add sugar. You are killing it. Now, what is leaky gut syndrome we are talking about? The lining of the digestive system. Here's where the problem starts, okay? The lining of the digestive system, which has bigger holes, it has tight joints like this when you go into the stomach, into the small intestine, the lining, where the villa is, where the food is. It has tight joints. But because of certain conditions we're going to talk about, these junctions become what? Enlarged. So they allow bigger food particles to go into the blood system. And those bigger particles, because they're not part of the body, they trigger an immune response. Now the body is trying to protect itself. It triggers that immune response. These holes allow bigger and digested food particles, unwanted bacteria, and other toxic material to pass through into the what? Into the body. Now, they don't just, you see the way how? That's pretty much the way how they look like. These are bigger particles. Now, it's isolated. It's not the whole digestive system, but certain areas are vulnerable. Then you begin to have sinuses, you know? You begin to have allergies. You begin to have achy knees. You begin to have back pains. You begin to have tight muscles because the body is not utilizing the food you are eating. Let food be your medicine and your medicine be food. If you're going to the pharmacy more than you go to the farm, you are going to the wrong place. You need to be going to the farm instead of going to the what? Pharmacy. If you know the word pharmacy, what it means, you wouldn't go there anyway. Amen. The gut lining works as a barrier, keeping out bigger what? Particles that can damage the what? The system. When the lining or the net in your digestive system track gets damaged, it causes even bigger holes to develop. Things that normally couldn't pass through are now what? Able to pass through. Gluten, bad bacteria, and digested food particles. Do you remember when we were young, you could eat anything else without even feeling a bit? A bit. When we were young, growing up. I'm not saying these days, because these days things are really, really destroyed completely. The world is waxed old like a, a rug, an old rug. But I remember when we were growing up, we, call, we were calling the stomach the garbage. We could put anything in there, nothing. We just get up and bounce back. When you start sneezing, my, my mother would line us up. You know what he would give us? <laughs> Castor oil. 
<laughs> Everybody, a, this, a, a tablespoon of castor oil. Man, the next day you're fine. You're running around. You're good to go. Yeah. But these things uh, really damage our... Um, you can see that's just a picture, a symbolized picture, just to give you an idea of what these bigger... You see, GI inflammation, that's a big hole. The net is what? It's cut... That's the whole way unwanted things go. You have stress, toxins, food particles, drugs, pathogens, organ malfunctions. That's the result of that. Okay, now, leaky gut symptoms and progression. This leads to inflammation throughout your what? your system and can cause symptoms such as bloating, food sensitivity, thyroid conditions. We're going we're gonna to deal with this thyroid condition in the afternoon today. So you can see the link between these things and some of the diseases that we are suffering from are linked to our what? Our thyroid. Fatigue, joint pain, headaches, skin uh, issues like acne, you know, psoriasis and stuff like that. It's because of the leaky gut. Weight gain or syndrome X. Now, one of the biggest warning signs that you may have a leaky gut is multiple food sensitivities. I have to see one eh, that explains. Like this morning, I just received a text message. There was a young lady that texted me from Arizona. She said she has been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So we started working on that type 2 diabetes. I said, don't nurse it like a baby. Nobody should lie to you that diabetes cannot be reversed. You can reverse diabetes. It's what you are eating. So I recommended a certain diet. Then she calls me back today. She said, say, I've been doing what you told me, but I'm not feeling very good. It's still bad. Then I said, remember, the body heals itself in a reverse order. Okay? The symptoms that you feel now are the first to go. And the symptoms that were first when you started your sickness progression will be the last ones to go. So you can see that even if you have diabetes, okay? That's your first symptom. You can control your sugar. But as you progress... There are certain things that came through your life you suffered from that were just hiding somewhere in your body, okay? So you get worse before you get what? Better. The idea is not to go back to what you're doing. Just continue doing. That's when you say, hey, what can we do? I am having a bad pain, okay? Then you say, are you using hard and cold? Because pain is a symptom that blood is not flowing in that area. So if you increase flow of blood, the pain will what? Go away. It's not the time to reach on Tylenol or oxycodone to mask the pain. But it's the time to clear the pain. Go to the source what is causing the pain. And what? Allow blood to flow in there. Have you noticed that when you have a knee that is hurting, if you take a heat pad and put there, slowly the pain what? goes away. Have you noticed that? The reason is that when you put a heat pad, you dilate the blood vessels, okay? So you allow more blood to flow into that area and clear the toxins that have accumulated around that area that is causing pain. Then you feel the relief of pain. One other thing that really increases pain, for example, when you are working with cancer patients, okay? Most of them, none of them would sit without no pain medications, because pain is the hallmark of cancer. But we manage them to live without pain-free, without medication, by using coffee enemas. When you use coffee enema, not decaffeinated coffee, but coffee with, I know in your mind you're saying, hey, what are you talking about? We are in a Seventh-day Adventist church. We are not in first-day church. What are you talking about? But let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. It has done amazing things and allowed people to get on who were dependent on drugs to be drug-free. Hmm? 
it, it does not get in, you know, affect it, you like drinking. Exactly, exactly. When you take the cough enema, it goes through the portal veins in the colon, in the, in the, in the rectum there. It goes straight to the liver and it activates the liver to start these peristalsis to dump the poison that has covered your liver. The reason why we feel more pain is because the liver is unable to purify the blood and allow it to go the places where it needs to go in order to clean it up. So when you do that, eh, people, you do as often as, I remember one person was doing up to eight times a day just to manage the pain. Within two weeks, he ended up being three times a day and could walk, could do things, could get off the bed. They were not really able to what? To walk. But just doing that, because by doing so, adding more food to it, they become better. So we are looking at those things. When you clean the system, then this is part of the cleaning of the system. All right. Partially digested protein and fat can seep through your intestinal lining, making their way into the bloodstream and causing an allergic response. This allergic response doesn't mean you break out in a rush or over your body, but it can lead to one of the symptoms I have mentioned above. If left unrepaired, it can lead to more severe health issues like inflammatory bowel disease, IBS, arthritis, eczema, psoriasis, depression, anxiety, migraine headaches, muscle pain, and chronic fatigue. Seven signs that you have a leaky gut. Food sensitivities, autoimmune disease is connected to what? Leaky gut. Thyroid problems, one of the autoimmune diseases that leaky gut syndrome may directly affect is Hashimoto. But there are so many thyroid diseases like Graves' disease, you see. Now, malabsorption, inflammatory skin conditions, mood issues, and autism. In actual fact, in my school where I work, when I talked I gave, a, this, I gave a presentation, so the mother had an autistic child in one of our classes. So she came to me and said, Mr. Banda, I want to get information because I want to put my son in the program that could really help to eliminate the symptoms that he has of autistic. He was diagnosed being autistic, but he was a high-functioning autistic child. He couldn't look at you in the eye would do like this, but very, very smart. At age seven, he would take his father's credit card, order pizza. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> call the cable company. I said, I want you to remove this. I need this program, this program, this program. Add it to my, here's the credit card. At age seven. <laughs> So we started working, working. It, he was in second grade. Now he's in fourth grade. He could recite a poem standing in front of the classroom without being ashamed, pointing out to people, directing things. He used to get meltdowns very often, just cleaning the gut and give the foods that heal the gut. I've seen it over and over. Now, I remember... I was talking to a group of young people at the University of South Carolina. It came into diet. They said, no, medicine are the ones that cure diseases. So I asked, give me an example of a diabetic medication that will cure diabetes. Now, if there are any sicknesses among us, okay, I want you to look at what you're eating. You know, the real issue that I found out, people fail to follow the instructions. 
our world has really broken down. Our soils are depleted. The way God created us, he put, he put everything that we need into the soil. Okay? Then we grow the crops from the soil to absorb those nutrients so that we can take them better. But if there are no minerals in the soil, what do we resort to? Putting fertilizer. We are just making big plants that has no nutritional value for us. We are still remaining what? Deficient. So, you, we got to look at the food we are eating in order for us to remain healthy. According to the Journal of Diabetes, there is a strong body evidence pointing to leaky gut syndrome as a major cause of what? Autoimmune disease, including type 1 diabetes, malabsorption of vital minerals and nutrients, including zinc, iron, and vitamin B12. Did you know that iron deficiency can cause us to be fatigued and can cause major psychiatric problems? Attention deficit in children. These are problems just deficient in iron. B12. Do you know that if you look at a um, 22-year-old brain and a 70-year-old brain, there are differences. Is that right? The 70-year-old brain becomes a little bit smaller compared to a 27-year-old brain. But if we would maintain our usable B12 throughout our lifetime, our brain is not going to shrink. It will remain fully formed and your function to your full capacity. Tell me, when Moses was going up the mountain, did he go on a stretcher? <laughs> At 120? No. We can maintain if we watch what we what we eat. I mean, I've recommended a lot of. I mean, I've, I've worked with a lot of people. So what I'm telling you, I'm telling you from experience. Hey, juice 16 ounces of vegetable juice, drink in the morning, and juice 16 ounces of juices and in the evening. Then in between, eat your vegetables. Okay? You might think that is a fairly simple instruction. Am I, am I right? But two weeks later, you pick up the phone. I'm checking, how are you doing? Oh, things are not changing. Okay? <laughs> Let's follow up what I told you. What did I say? Oh, you told me to drink juices in the morning. Have you been drinking? Hmm, sometimes. Do you think it's going to get better without doing that? But what comes worse is that, oh yeah, I'm drinking. How much? Oh, I drink four ounces. Is four ounces 16 ounces? Do you see? I told one of um, my co-workers, I'll give this illustration, one of my co-workers, fell with a cord. I mean, real serious. You know how a cord will take you down, really completely. I said, your immune system is down. Let's build it up. When did you last take vitamin D? He said, I don't remember. I said, okay. Take 50,000 IUs of vitamin D, 150 milligrams of zinc, then 100,000 IUs of vitamin A, and drink lots of water. Don't eat any sugar, just drink water for three days. Then after that, you bring down those vitamin D take, 5,000 every day until you finish your bottle that you bought. Then vitamin, uh, vitamin A, you come to 25,000. I call three days later, guess what? I'm taking 1,000 IUs of vitamin D. Do you see one and 50, they are totally different? We fail to follow the instructions that 
That's the same thing we do with the word of God. Genesis 1.29 said what? He gave us an example of the diet. But sometimes we think much better. We say, you know what? You got to have some protein. I don't see where nuts, grains, and fruits will give you protein. You know? Where am I going to get my protein needs? Then my question comes, hey, let me ask you this. Who is bigger? You or an elephant? He said, an elephant. Where does an elephant get his protein needs? Because it, it, he must need a more protein than I want. <laughs> you see what I mean? When God gave us the diet, it was complete the way we need it. If we begin to modify it, it's like buying a Mercedes Benz. They tell you put um, mid-grade, and you say, oh, mid-grade is expensive. Super unleaded is expensive. I'm going to put just unleaded grade. It's all gas. I'm going to put in there. How long are you going to run that car? Pretty much not long. You hang it up. That's the same way we do with our bodies. There are four main causes of leaky gut, which include poor diet, chronic stress, toxic overload, bacteria imbalance. When I talk of bacteria imbalance, I'm talking the bacteria in our what? In our gut. Did you know that our gene expression is 70% controlled by our gut bacteria? There are 100 trillion living organisms that are not part of us living with us. And when you look at these organisms, they are always in struggle to survive. Because when we are eating food, for example, if you sit down to eat french fries, bread, how much fiber do we have in there? Eggs, how much fiber do we have in there? Nothing. So these animals down there, they are what? Starving to survive. Because all the food is digested and is lifted up in the small intestines. By the time it goes down to the large intestine, there's nothing left out there for them to what? To eat. So they begin to what? To diminish. But they are not going to diminish before they fight for their lives. They fight their lives, they eat the what? The mucous membrane of our what? Our colon. And begin to increase the immune response. Most common components of food that can damage the intestinal lining are the protein found in unsprouted grains, sugar, GMO, and what? Conventional dairy. This is good news for plant, but bad news for what? Your body. The digestive lining is covered with sugar coating cells that help break down the food. Lectins gravitate towards this area. And when they attach to your digestive lining, it damages your gut and causes what? Inflammation. You know, in my recovery, one thing that I vowed was to quit eating meat and sugar. Those two things removed my weight from 297 pounds to 192 within a period of six months. Wow. You know, nowadays, in the United States of America, all of us sitting here, we are eating 150 pounds of sugar a year. From 15 pounds in the 1900s. That's a lot of sugar. What time should I stop? Hmm? Quarter till. Okay, let me go to um, the four step plan to heal the leaky gut. We know what causes it now, okay? But let us go to things that you can do in order to spare your lining. 
So I said, remove the food and factors that what? Damage the gut. Replace with healing foods. Repair with specific supplements. Rebalance with probiotic. Those are the four steps that we could take. All right? Remove foods and factors that damage the gut. The top foods to remove are sugar, grains, meat, <coughs> dairy, and GMO foods. The top toxins exposure to climate are what? Did you ever think that? Tap water? Yeah. You know our water system, they are not looking for chemicals. They are looking for pathogens that could cause what? Diseases. But when you are taking Prozac, eh? Prozac does not disintegrate. When it comes through your urine, you pee in the toilet, where does that water go? That pee. It goes through the sewer system. <coughs> but when it goes back out there, it is filtered. Prozac is still in there. And it's going to go back into our what? Our water system. So whether you are depressed or not, you are what? <laughs> you, are, you, you are taking Prozac. Chlorine. Fluoride. All these are to make water safe. But when we take them in large amounts, they have a profound effect on our environment and on our physical health. Painkillers and antibiotics. Yesterday I was in Walmart when I was changing my battery. We started this conversation. I went to look for magnesium. By the way, magnesium is another deficient mineral that most of us are what? Suffering from. And nobody pays attention to it. But I was there looking for magnesium. So magnesium is here. Probiotic is here. I struck a conversation with the lady that was pulling probiotic. Then I said, ma'am, that's the wrong kind. So I got her attention. We started talking. Before maybe five minutes into the conversation, two ladies have passed by there to pick up. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, people are listening. Probiotic is getting attention and these manufacturers they know that we can make money with what probiotic but what i was pointing to her i said look you are taking antibiotics and you are taking probiotic to replace what does antibiotic do kill bacteria does it say okay this is a good bacteria i'm gonna leave it alive and this one is a bad bacteria, I'm going to take it out? No, it wipes out. I say, what you are doing is mopping the floor without turning the faucet that is causing water to wet your floor. You're going to mop forever. What you need to do is when you finish taking your antibiotics, that's when you replenish your what? But you know, yeast infection is going to have swelled on me. Every time I take antibiotics, I've got yeast infection. I said, look here. Yeast feeds on sugar. Then so, I say, yeah. Quit eating sugar. Quit eating grains because grains are going to turn into sugar. You can finish your course of antibiotics without getting it. yeast infection. Then he turned around to me and said, now, why didn't my doctor tell me? I said, I said, probably he didn't know that. Now you know it, go ahead and do right. Then when you go back to see him, you tell him so that he can be aware of those things. Then other, people's, other people who are coming after you would be spared from that. Yeah, don't eat sugar, as simple as that. Now, foods that heal the gut, fermented vegetables, contain organic acid that balance intestinal pH, with probiotics to support the gut. Sauerkraut, kimchi, kivasi, these are names that, but all I know is just foods that have been fermented. Coconut products, all coconut products are especially good for your gut. You see? Then, 
mid-chain fatty acids in coconut are easier to what? To digest than other fats and work well for the leaky gut. The coconut kefir contains probiotics that support the digestive system. These are just some of the examples. What I'm giving you is to give you an idea where you could start emphasizing. You see, you are moving from where you are to where you need to be. As you study more on this, you know, then you begin to modify it the way you need it. Sprouted seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds have been sprouted are greater sources of fiber to help support the growth of what? Beneficial bacteria. If you have severe leaky gut, start out getting fiber from steamed vegetables and what? Fruits. Before you go into raw, just eating them raw. Sprout them, steam them, so that you can at least emulsify the fat, so you can have more fiber into it. Even just to get more good fiber. There are a lot out of them. There are many supplements that support the digestive health, but the most beneficial leaky gut supplements are L-glutamine, probiotic digestive enzymes, aloe vera juice, quercetin, NAG, and licorice root. These are very good. Just, this is just a sample. L-glutamine, what it does, it helps to seal that hose in the, what? In the digestive system. Anytime you have a sugar craving, eh? you are deficient in minerals. The brain does not know that, okay, protein, I'm deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, then this is what I need to tell them to give. The only thing it knows is, bring me sugar. So you begin to crave for sugar. If you take L-glutamine, put it under your tongue, you'll notice that the sugar craving will, will disappear Im immediately. That's, you'll notice that those, when I work with, I have supplements that heal your, that will save your life. There are about 12 of them. One of them is L-glutamine. L-glutamine is very good to remove cravings. And people who are very sensitive, it helps them to become not very sensitive in this. All right. Probiotics are the most important supplements because they help replenish good bacteria and crowd out bad bacteria. It is recommended that you get probiotics in both food and what? Supplement form. Therefore, load up on both probiotic rich foods and take at least 50 billion units of probiotic daily from a high quality brand. And you'll notice that when you are buying probiotics, it's not a cheap item it is a little bit expensive if you're gonna get a good one but the easiest way is just ferment your vegetables you know make make them sour <clears throat> i know it gives you chills you know <laughs> but you feel good digestive enzymes take one or two capsules of digestive enzymes at the beginning of each meal to ensure that your food is what digested those are just simple um, remedies. All right. The tempter can never compel us to do evil. He cannot control minds unless they are yielded to what? To his control. I mean, that's how I love God. I love God because he gave us that freedom of choice. You know? We can choose what we need to do. The will must consent. Faith must let go its hold upon Christ before Satan can exercise what? His power upon us. But every sinful desire we cherish affords him a foothold. Every point in which we fail to meet the divine standard is an opening door by which he can enter to tempt and destroy us. And every failure or defeat on our part gives occasion for him to reproach Christ. Brothers and sisters, whatever we do, we cannot separate our diet from our spirituality. 
give me a child. Let me feed him from age seven. By the time he comes age nine, we'll set him in his way. And he's not going to turn around on those things. Food has a profound effect on our behavior. <clears throat> Consider now, when you go home, line up your refrigerator and take the word of God. Does it reflect? If it does not, let's begin to move towards normalizing. We can't do it by ourselves. We have to ask God to help us. In conclusion, and he said, if thou diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will put, I mean, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of what? These diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And the spirit of prophecy says that the reason why God does not hear our prayers to heal the sick because we have not stopped violating the laws of God. He cannot heal us in our sins. He will heal us from our sins and make us holy for the day he comes. May God bless you and be with you as we continue to worship him this Sabbath.